So the first reveal of sorts for PlayStation 5 has been and gone, and we know the basics that power Sony's next-gen machine. An octo-core Zen 2 CPU, custom Navi GPU with possible hardware ray tracing support, 3D audio and PlayStation 4 backwards compatibility. But what don't we know? Well, memory allocation for one thing. And yeah, we know nothing at all about CPU clocks or GPU configuration. We're definitely in theory crafting territory here, but there's an interesting story that's been progressing in the background and I have some thoughts on it. And it all comes down to these product codes for in-development AMD system on chips. Okay, so when AMD creates a brand new processor, it gets a code name and a product name. Gonzalo in the case of the uh, processor I'm going to be looking at today. And for reasons that aren't particularly clear to me, the work in progress processors get a test run, or several of them, on Windows using 3D Mark. It all sounds rather suspect and completely unbelievable, right? Well, bear with me here because the story is quite fascinating. Now, when a product is tested on 3D Mark, the data gets unearthed by technology spy Appysack, and he posts it on either Reddit or Twitter. Okay, so effectively we have a bloke from Thailand posting seemingly random numbers on social media. So how can we make any kind of connection between this and console hardware? I mean, this is all pretty tenuous stuff, right? And the question I had to ask in following this story was pretty simple. I mean, if you're making a custom console system on chip, why on earth would you go to the lengths of integrating it with Windows and producing drivers and whatnot to run 3D Mark on it? And why 3D Mark? And yet, well, the more I looked into it, the more I found convincing evidence that there's something to these postings. First of all, Apisac himself has a proven track record of unearthing evidence of new products way ahead of their official reveals. I'll talk about that in a sec, because I actually own a physical example of that right here, the Zubor Z+. And secondly, there's the nature of the product codes themselves. There's a, a key of sorts to unlocking some of the information, which gives us some tantalizing spec hints. But more than that, it also reveals the kind of market the chip is aimed at, and we can compare that to existing retail products. Okay, so let's take a look at this mysterious new code name and see what it tells us. Now, this isn't the first time that the processor we're examining here, AMD Gonzalo, has turned up on the 3D Mark database. An earlier iteration of the same chip arrived in January. So we actually have two sets of information product codes to decode here. Starting with the first digit, we have the number two, then the letter Z or Z, if you prefer, on the update version of the chip. What this tells us is that in January, an engineering sample of this processor was tested, followed up much more recently by a qualification sample, which we could take to mean something approaching final silicon. The second letter there is G in both cases, and this is actually quite crucial. Based on prior AMD processor codes, we can be reasonably certain that this chip is primarily designed for a dedicated gaming device. After that, we have a 16, which is typically associated with a CPU base clock. In this case, 1.6 gigahertz. Beyond that, our understanding becomes less clear until we come to the number eight there. This is the amount of physical cores in the processor. So an octo-core CPU then, which Sony has confirmed for PlayStation 5. What follows is a mysterious CPU cache configuration we've not seen before, followed by the core stepping. You can see that in the space of three months, we've moved from an A2 chip to a B2 chip. The processor has been presumably refined and improved. The 32 there in the product code, the chances are that this is the max processor boost clock. Um, well, console CPUs don't tend to boost, they tend to lock to a max. So yes, this would suggest 3.2 gigahertz. Now in console terms, an impressive frequency, though in Ryzen terms, it's quite restrained. But remember that the Zubor Z Plus locks all four of its cores to just 3.0 gigahertz. The final part of the code seems to link to GPU base 
and boost clocks along with a PCI identifier. Now, interestingly, a couple of weeks before the Gonzalo information first appeared in January, the PCI ID there appeared on the Chip Hale forum where it was identified as Navi Lite. The earlier chip seems to clock this GPU to a relatively paltry 1 GHz, but the qualification sample suggests a much healthier 1.8 GHz max boost. So we can assume that AMD and whoever its partner is have been experimenting with the GPU in the run-up to producing that uh, next revision of silicon. And I've got to admit that if we're going to get a 1.8 GHz GPU in a next-gen console, that's right at the absolute top end of my personal expectations. So yeah, a little suspicious about that. By extension, that's also a reason to, you know, treat this information with caution perhaps. But hey, let's go for it for now because boost clock there gives us one variable needed to calculate peak GPU compute power. So how do we calculate those seemingly all important teraflops then? Well, let's assume that whatever architecture the GPU is using, it's still based on AMD's graphics core next, GCN. We take the amount of potential compute units, multiply by their component 64 shaders, multiply by two instructions per clock, and then multiply again by the 1800 megahertz frequency there. Divide by a million and we're good to go. I've chosen a number of potential GPU configurations here, so let's dig in. Now, good place to start. PlayStation 4 Pro shipped with 36 active compute units, which may be a good match for Sony compatibility-wise. That would give us a GPU compute total of 8.3 teraflops. Go up to the same 40 active compute units found in Xbox One X, that rises to 9.2 teraflops. You can see how everything scales as we add more CUs. If we have the same 56 compute units found in Google Stadia's bespoke AMD GPU, 1.8 GHz gives us around 12.9 teraflops, while the 60 found in the top-end $700 Radeon 7 takes us up to 13.8. If the GCN limit that we have right now of 64 compute units remains with Navi, peak compute will be 14.7 TF. But remember, it's unlikely that a console system on chip will ship without some of those compute units disabled to improve yields from the production line. Now, maybe you know my first rule of assessing uh, next-gen console leaks. While it's tempting to wish for the absolute best of the best, be prepared for disappointment, or rather adjust expectations to account for things uh, common to consoles, like uh, thermal restrictions, the form factor, and of course the price, crucially the price. An SSD isn't going to be cheap, let's put it that way. And as I said, a 1.8 GHz clock on a console-sized unit does sound extremely optimistic to me. 10 to 12 teraflops max is kind of what I expect to see in a top-end next-gen console with a pretty high price point. And yeah, we should prepare for actual GPU compute throughput to be lower, a fair bit lower perhaps. A smaller chip with fewer compute units is cheaper to produce, easier to call than a larger one, and it can be clocked higher. Now, as I said in our PlayStation 5 reaction video, the teraflop war may well be over in that case, and the marketing focus may shift significantly. Let's not forget, Mark Cerny talked about ray tracing, not teraflops for starters in that PS5 reveal. So let's recap, an eight core CPU, likely Zen based in nature, featuring a 3.2 gigahertz clock and a Navi based GPU running at 1.8 gigahertz. The evidence does seem to be gaining weight, but obviously next-gen console rumors, leaks, whatever, need to be taken with a pinch, a spoonful, or indeed a whole mountain of salt. So when I asked Apisac why a console processor would be tested on Windows and on 3D Mark, he came up with this. So yeah, that's prior testing carried out on older AMD in-development SOCs with clock speeds that represent a very, very close match to the processors found within PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 4 Pro. But this whole process of tracking a processor through development and into an actual retail product and using 3D Mark to do it, it kind of sounds kind of crazy. So yeah, Apisac came up with examples of PS4-like chips that were tested. And uh, well, the question is, 
can we confirm 100% that they were actually Sony silicon? Well, the 3D Mark shot there has one of those AMD product code names. In this case, DG1001FGF84HT. And here's a shot of the launch PlayStation 4's processor. And there we see the product code name, pretty much exactly the same. The only difference being 1000 rather than 1001. Pretty compelling evidence. Another example of a pre-production chip ending up in an actual retail product. Well, Apisac followed the progress of a mysterious Ryzen and Vega processor codenamed Fung Huang using his 3D Mark searching skills. And that product ended up appearing in this, the Zubo Z Plus, the surprise out of the blue Chinese console from last year. So at this point, as much as the idea of using 3D Mark to track in development AMD silicon sounds absolutely nuts, the methodology checks out. At the very least, AMD Gonzalo is a new piece of performance silicon that combines an octo-core Ryzen setup with a Navi GPU. And it's a Navi GPU that seems to be separate and distinct from discrete desktop GPU products. Could it simply be some kind of next-gen desktop APU then? Well, going back to the product codes again, the second digit there, G, to the best of my knowledge, it has only appeared on gaming processors. Desktop APUs get a D for desktop, and well, that kind of makes sense, right? I think what makes Gonzalo rather interesting is that a qualification sample, the Z at the beginning of the product code kind of confirms that, well, that means that we're effectively looking at silicon that is very, very close to final. Tweaks can be made, but any major revisions would effectively need a massive amount of investment in re-architecting the processor. So it's gonna be uh, fascinating to see how long it takes for this mystery chip to be realized in an actual retail product. With the Zubor Fong Huang, it was eight months from the 3D Mark result coming up uh, in uh, Apisac's 3D Mark testing to the console actually being revealed. And that's a relatively smaller scale production run there compared to a multi-million unit run required for, say, a Microsoft or Sony console. Whether it's a console or something different, I'm going to be fascinating to see how this plays out and the extent to which further PS5 information that leaks over the next few months may or may not match up with these Gonzalo specs. But that's all from me for now. As always, please do like and subscribe to support the work that Digital Foundry does. Ring the bell, yes, for instant notifications when a new video is published. And if you love what we do, please consider supporting the team more directly via Patreon. In addition to really helping us out, you can download well over two years of our content in pristine source file quality. But that's all from me for now. As always, thanks for watching, if indeed you still are.